Champions Cup, fourth round. Um, yeah, two games on the Friday, which is Saturday here in New Zealand, 8.45, which is a reasonable time in the morning to get up and watch a bit of rugby. Both these games are on at the same time. So in all likelihood, probably watch these both at the same time and see how we go with that. Sometimes it works better than others, depending on how much action there is in either of the games. If it's pretty slow in both games, it works out well. If both games are crackers, then it makes it hard to keep up with everything. But we'll see how things go. Um, to add a bit of spice to this round as well, is that it's the same fixtures, but in reverse from last week. So uh, Racing this week hosts Ospreys, who they visited last week. Likewise, Harlequins with, uh, Harlequins with Ulster. So... Yeah, there's a fair bit to look forward to. Um, I will start with the first one. Pool 4, Ospreys are 4th. They've not had a win yet. It's not a great season thus far um, for those guys. Russing, unbeaten in the Champions Cup. They did have that draw with Munster. Uh, but they are top of the pool, so it's top against bottom. Uh, I think 7 changes all up for, for Ospreys. Uh, Russing have made fewer, but they have made some as well. Uh, you got to think at this point that uh, Osprey's focus is probably more on the Pro 14. <clears throat> Racing, though, are still kind of looking forward to, to trying to top their pull. Um, last week it was 40 points to 19, but you have to remember Osprey's had a man red carded within a minute of the game starting. And I forget how many yellow cards were in that game, but there were yellow cards as well. So hopefully we keep it 15-15 on this one. Um, for Russing, they've benched uh, Finn Russell. They are playing Ben Volavola at 10. Uh, otherwise, the side is much the same. It's a new back row, though, uh, with Sanconi uh, moving to the 6 jersey from the bench. Uh, Tanga moves to the 7 jersey from the bench, and Shuzanu comes into the squad uh, from outside the match day 23. Palu moves to the second row. And Dupichot uh, is there on the right wing. There is no uh, Teddy Toma for for this one for Racing. Otherwise, I think the side is pretty much the same as the one that played last week. Uh, for Ospreys, like I said, I think it's seven changes. Ashley is in in the second row. Uh, Kieran Williams at 12. Leslie Klim at 14. Kai Evans at 15. Uh, Thomas Wheeler moves from the bench to the 13 jersey. <clears throat> Lydia is still there, captaining from the 6 jersey. Uh, obviously, Dan Evans is suspended after that red card last week. I think it was, was it three or four weeks that he got, which is uh, a fair few. Um, there's obviously still no George North, still no Alan jones still no Tipperick. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a squad missing some of their bigger, bigger guns. And... Um, yeah, that's going to be a tough one. Hopefully Luke Morgan uh, gets a bit of space to run out on that left wing for, for Ospreys this week. The bookies are not giving Ospreys much of a chance. Uh, they are saying Russing by 30 points. Rugby forecast algorithm is giving it a little... Well, making it a little bit closer, but still not much. Uh, it's got Racing to win this one by 23. So, yeah, it's um, it's going to be a tough one over there in Paris, but I guess it's a nice stadium. It's indoors. The AstroTurf always makes it an interesting factor as well, but it'll be a dry track, so huge TV screen over there on one side, so we'll see how things go uh, in that game. The, the next one... Uh, is, is Harlequins and Ulster. Uh, it was only one point in it last week, and Harlequins will have been really gutted uh, to lose that one because they were, at one point, looking looking pretty solid for a win, but you cannot write this Ulster team off. They they came back and, and managed to get it 25 points to 24. You look at these records, Ulster are 3 from 3, but remember their points difference is only 7 points in the Champions Cup thus far, so they are in the positive. Uh, seven points, but that's three wins. And the grand total of the points difference is plus seven. So it's always squeaky bum stuff, as we would say, uh, for, for the Harlequins guys, where you are on the edge of your seat for the whole game, which certainly adds to the, the tension. Uh, it's easier to watch their games as a neutral than as an Ulster fan, I would imagine. Uh, Harlequins technically, I guess, are not dead and buried. You can get away with two losses. Uh, as long as you kind of win the rest of your games. 
But from the looks of their squad, it would say uh, perhaps they are looking at the Premiership more so than the Champions Cup at this point. It might have been different if they had got a win last week. But there are a fair few guys missing from the squad. They've made a fair few changes. Uh, Garcia Bota starts at loose head. Sinclair is still there. Uh, he captains from tight head. Um, double try scorer Elia Elia is there at hooker. So that was good good game from him last week. Uh, Lavis Thavubati. Will Evans is at six. I think he's up from outside the 23. Kunatani moves to seven. And Dombrat, who was very effective last week, is still there at number eight. Uh, Landajo is at nine. He's up from the bench. Uh, Brett Heron is in at ten. From outside the squad, I believe. Murley's at left wing from outside the 23. Uh, Francis Saeli moves up from the bench to 12. James Lang changes position to 13 from 12. I think he played last week. Uh, Gonova moves up from the bench to the wing. And that's the list of the changes. So, yeah, man. It's a, it's a much changed side for Quinns. No Lorde, no Mala, no Kier, no Robshaw, no Marcus Smith, uh, no Ibitoye. So, yeah a motorbike going past my house um yeah man it's uh it's a much changed squad so i don't know maybe they're just trying to freshen things up we will see uh it's a bit more stable uh for ulster stockdale is still there at fullback matt faddis moves up from the bench to move to the right wing also treadwell gets a start in the second row otherwise it's pretty much the same squad mccloskey and marshall in the midfield ludix on the other wing with uh, i mentioned faddis before uh, it's still Billy Burns and John Cooney. Cooney has just been phenomenal, hasn't he? So I saw an article, I didn't read it, but it's the headline was he's Ireland's number one nine at the moment. It's hard to argue with the form that he's in, at least from what I've seen from the Champions Cup. I haven't been watching much Pro 14. But um, yeah, Marcel Kutsia, he's still playing. I think he was didn't last the whole 80 last week, but it's good to see he's back. Uh, Geordie Murphy, Sean Reedy, and Henderson, he's captain. So yeah. Uh, the bookies have got this one being tight. They are saying Ulster, but only by three. Rugby forecast algorithm has also got Ulster, but only by one. So Ulster would absolutely love a win here. Because although they are uh, three wins from three, they are far from guaranteed uh, top spot in the pool. Especially when you're not really smashing teams and picking up bonus points to give that bit of extra distance. They are doing the job uh, and just need to keep doing what they're doing so uh, we'll see how these ones go you guys let me know your thoughts on these games uh, how do you think they're going to go do you think Ospreys can limit the damage uh, over there in Paris or do you think it's going to be a pretty messy one as the bookies would suggest do you agree that Ulster will uh, pick up and get a result over there um, in London or do you think Harlequins will do the job you guys let me know your thoughts uh, drop us a like on the video it's always helpful and um yeah, cheers guys, I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.